chairman of the Lee County Board of Commissioners calls the meeting to order on this, the 6th day of October 2008, to conduct and act on all business which would be properly brought before the body. First order of business will be our invocation, and I ask you to uh, remain standing for our Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> Recognize Commissioner Quiggle for the uh, invocation. Let us stand. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day and allowing us to come here in a free and democratic society to do the business of the county. We ask that you watch over each and every one of us that have these important decisions to make. We ask that you be with each one in the county and help them to continue to be the good citizens that they are. Thank you so much for all that you do. It is in your name that we pray. Amen. Amen. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now recognize Brenda Potts for a presentation of the Employee of the Month. Chairman Brown, members of the board, it's my pleasure to introduce you to <coughs> the Employee of the Month Selection Committee's recommendation for the month of October 2008, Marilyn McKinney. Marilyn is a uh, member of the administration department. She's been employed in Lee County since November 26, 2006. <coughs> she currently serves as an administrative assistant <coughs> and risk management specialist. As an administrative assistant, Mrs. Uh, McKinley quickly earned a reputation as an individual willing to go far beyond her job description and take on additional duties. This willingness to do more was never more important than when her duties were expanded to include those relating to risk management. As a, as a risk management specialist, part of her duties include working with the risk manager and in, in developing and implementing county policies and procedures. Mrs. McKinney's professionalism and administrative skills were particularly valuable during the recent transition to a new workers' compensation vendor. In addition to taking on additional duties, Mrs. McKinney can consistently be counted on to assist others, whether they're county employees or members of the public at large. As stated in her nomination, Maryland displays excellent customer service skills. Everyone who comes in contact with her benefits from her professionalism. She's a great confidant to many employees. Often it is those who work behind the scene that makes everyone else look better. Mrs. McKinney and her husband, Ricky Jr., have, been, uh, have three children, Kendra, Erica, her husband's Ricky Sr., <laughs> <laughs> Three children, Kendra, Erica, and Ricky Jr. In her spare time, she likes to go shopping and she loves to travel. The committee felt that based on the recommendation and Mrs. McKinney's dedicated and loyal service to Lee County, she should be awarded Employee of the Month. Therefore, the committee respectfully asks that you join us in awarding Marilyn McKinney Employee of the Month, October 2008, in recognition, recognition of her professionalism and dedication to providing a high level of service to the citizens of Lee County. I give you Marilyn McKinney. Thank you. Marilyn, if you come forward, please. We have a certificate for you, Employee of the Month, October 2008. <coughs> Recognize Marilyn McKinney for going above and beyond regular duties to be an outstanding employee. She's signed by your boss, John Crumpton, and the chairman of this board. Also, I have a star award because all of our uh, employees who win the Employee of the Month uh, competition, or it's really not a competition, I guess, but uh, Thank you. All right. I also have a certificate for you, Mr. Crumpton, for 
certificates for you. Uh, this entitles you to a day off the pay. She mentioned that you enjoy going shopping, so you can do that. <laughs> your day off. Buy you a pizza or go buy, and not buy one, but receive a, a pizza for Tommy John. Movies from the movie gallery and Coke products. Congratulations. Okay. Are there any additional agenda items that may need to be added, uh, Mr. Crompton? Okay. Does anyone have uh, any questions about the consent agenda? Have any changes to the regular agenda? Do so your motion that the agenda be approved as printed? So All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. I ask that uh, for a motion to uh, approve the consent agenda. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed say no. It's so ordered. We have a proclamation uh, that's just been approved uh, by your approval of the consent agenda, and I'd like to read it at this time. Proclamation to proclaim October 14, 2008 as Miss North Carolina Day in support of ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease. Whereas Miss North Carolina 2008, Amanda Lauren Watson, will be in Lee County on Tuesday, October the 14th, 2008, and whereas Ms. Watson is a rising senior at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, pursuing a Bachelor of Music degree with a concentration in education, and whereas Ms. Watson will visit some of the local schools to share her message, Right Decisions, Right Now which is a youth smoking prevention program. And whereas Ms. Watson is an active advocate for the ALS uh, Association, um, serving people living with Luke Gehrig's disease, and has been named a national spokesperson for her work with the association. And whereas Ms. Watson will also be in attendance at the Dennis Wicker Civic Center on the evening of October 14, 2008, raising funds for a local Lee County ALS patient and the ALS Association. Now, therefore, will be it resolved that the Lee County Board of Commissioners proclaim October 14, 2008 as Miss North Carolina Day and uh, extends to Miss Amanda Lauren Watson deep appreciation for her dedication to the fight against ALS. In witness, wherefore I hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of Lee County to be affixed on this, the sixth day of October, 2008. Signed, Robert H. Brown, Chairman of Lee County Board of Commissioners. Is Ms. Dew here? Would you come forward, please? And uh, if you... If you you want to make some comments, you can. Yes, I'd just like to thank um, the county commissioners and the board for supporting this endeavor. Um, this is a joint partnership between the Sanford Lions Club and also Toyota of Sanford. Um, we are trying to work together to have this event. It will be at 6 o'clock at the Dennis Wicker Civic Center um, Tuesday night, so we're excited about that. So um, just thank you for your support of that. She will also, um, from what I understand now, be singing. She is majoring in opera, and she will be singing a few numbers for us. So we're looking forward to having her here during the day and visiting East Lee, West Lee, um, Lee Christian, and some other locations that she'll be here to so we thank you for your support. Okay, Ms. Dew, if you'll come forward, I will give you some certificate that you can pass along to Ms. Watson. Thank you.
come now to the public comment section. I would remind uh, those who have signed to speak that you're limited to three minutes and that uh, our county attorney, Mr. Hall, is the timekeeper. Recognize Mr. Russell B. Noel. I prepared something for each member. I hope I didn't miss anyone. In the interest of saving time, my three allotted minutes, I will dispense within the salutations and come directly to the point. I come here today with a series of previous questions of this board which remain, for the most part, unanswered. This time, however, I have supplied each member with a set of my questions. I again ask that each member read each one carefully and respond. Each question is related to how the county spends revenue provided by taxpayer money. I would also like to remind this board this is the year 2008 and not the European feudal system, centuries. I happen to be an American citizen, <coughs> a taxpayer, and a legal, and I have signed the word legal, voter in what is supposed to be a democracy a form of government which requires elected officials, as you are, to be responsible to the electorate. Consequently, I give you my solemn promise that I will continue to ask these questions as well as other legitimate questions until I receive answers. <coughs> Possibly the <laughs> partially new board after November the 4th election will be more responsive. I thank you for your listening. I assume you did. And when may I expect to receive written responses? Any dialogue? No, sir. The public comment section, we do not answer questions or ask questions of you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Uh, gracias. Appreciate it. Recognize Mr. Keith Clark. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I would, um, the Ely Dispatch is starting a new service for the community called Fact Check to be sure that things and written in the paper and other places are, are accurate. I'd like to share with you just uh, one fact check that um, uh, I did determine. The responsibility for the maintenance of the Jonesboro uh, building is under the lease uh, the responsibility of the community college and not the responsibility of the Board of uh, Education. I would also uh, like to take this opportunity to commend this board for making its materials readily accessible on the internet to the citizens. I have begun to work with the municipality of Sanford and we'll be doing a comparison of the two. And the uh, work that goes into making what will be happening in the agenda 
and what has happened and finding that information available to the public is significantly better on the part of the Lee County Commissioners than it is uh, by the other, by the major municipality in town. And one of the proposals that I will be uh, supporting is a, as part of the new logo and vision, is a joint web page for all government in Lee County so that people will be able to go to one site and find out about all government. And what that will mean is they will need to be coming up to the standard that you have set. So occasionally you may have noted that I have some criticisms. I believe that I should pass on compliments and sincerely felt compliments uh, when appropriate. One other fact I'd like to correct is I do not blame Mr. Reeves for the weather. I blame Greg Fischel. Thank you very much. You can blame me. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Clark. That concludes the public comment section. Uh, having on the two to sign the request sheet. We now move on to old business and uh, recognize Mr. Eric Griffin for an ordinance to provide emergency management in the unincorporated areas of Lee County. Hello everyone, I appreciate you uh, taking a second reading at the emergency management ordinance. Uh, in your packet also, or your, within your folder also is a rate schedule which you requested uh, regarding the hazardous materials ordinance. I didn't want to call your attention to that, but um, and regarding to the ordinance on on the table at this time, um, all, all of the board's uh, requested changes have been made, and um, and uh, it's it's up to you for any further questions or address. Right. Any member have a question of Mr. Griffin? I've got one it's on page. Well, it starts on page four and runs to page five. It talks about the disability of the chairperson and the succession. I'm not quite clear on the county manager's role. I would have assumed that his position is automatic. It's not like it falls to him. He's a part of that decision-making process all along. Okay. So I'm not. Um, if, if I recall correctly, uh, when the board was dis discussing this and it came to the point where that no uh, commissioner could be reached within the um, alphabetical order addressing past the chair and the vice chairperson, no commissioner could be reached, it would then fall to the county manager. We can word it. If it's not clear, we can definitely address any wording. Well, I'm not suggesting you change it. I'm trying to understand it. That's what I'm saying. I would assume and certainly expect that in matters related <coughs> to this, that he would be an automatic extension of who, whomever's in charge. Yes, sir. Uh, is all I'm saying. Does it? Yes, sir. And maybe that's what it's read. Is that the way you intended it? Or? Yeah, yes, sir. I mean, he, during any discussion, anything regarding this emergency situation, he is, you know, right there with us. And he's part of the policy and control group, which okay. makes the decisions. Well, and, uh, it's been my experience in the past that uh, uh, the uh, chairman of the board works with the county manager. They're together, really. I guess this the, the big thing here was if you were if you had to call, call a curfew, and you know we had some kind of major uh, you know emergency here, and you were calling a curfew, and you could not, and, you know, we had a nuclear you know, problem with the Chairman Harris or something, and people could not be found for whatever reason. Um, it just goes in succession, and then. I guess if nobody's found, it goes to the to the county manager, and he makes the decision if none of us can be found. 
Okay. But then again, I read it now. But then again, he would still be trying to make contact, you know, with the board. Right. He's in charge by default. Yeah. Right. There's nobody right. there, period. Yes, sir. So, okay. All right, any other questions? Do you hear a motion that the ordinance be approved? So, any further discussion? <laughs> these these fees will be applied along with this. <coughs> if, if the board agrees um, that that it was just something that was requested that we did bring back. Oh, okay, this, okay. This this, this is for information. Um, yes. It's not a part of the ordinance. Okay. Those, those change. Uh, is this pretty much so in line with, would you, did you get this from like Wake County and Chattanooga County? Um, uh, well, uh, I guess to clarify, the um, all the other counties that I pulled that did this, Wake County, Brunswick County, um, Guilford County, they all charge a flat, I mean, they all charge at cost. Um, the one determined, the one change, the change that I made from that was they don't recoup or make any plans for overhead fees, such as for the billing time, Cost for billing and numbers and tracking any kind of receipts. We wanted to create total costing for that, so I added a two percent overhead fee for that, for which would that would help recoup any other county expenses that were not that we could not get a direct cost for. So, um, such as the county manager's time, uh, the uh, the county attorney's time, and whatnot. And at two percent, we are not expecting any major impacts. Um, that, that would be the one difference that we have found that I found with the polling that I did with the other count, uh, county emergency management directors in the state. Would this come under section 23 of the penalties, or how how does this? Um, that would come? Be, that would come under um, reimbursement and compensation. Uh, penalties would be on top of anything any of these fees, um, and that would come from. Uh, blatant disregard for what the emergency services require. So, okay, and this has come under the hazmat ordinance that we yes, approved yes. last month. That is correct, sir. Yeah, the hazmat materials. Two, two separate ordinances. Yeah. Yes, sir. So this is what we'd be dealing back in, say, insurance companies. If a major company had a spill on the side of the road. That is exactly correct. So, so if the county is responsible, we're able to recoup our charges, our expenses. And that's something that's happened in the county here on major highways numerous times. That's correct, sir. Um, we've been very fortunate. Most of the times that uh, count the transportation hauler did it on their own when we requested it. This is in case they do not um, are as willing to to work with the county. Okay. Any other is, questions? Is this available with the ordinance? Um. If, if a person comes in and wants a copy of the ordinance, does this is this attached? Yes, it will be. Uh, so, and, and it'll also be available on our website. And we ought to include in here a statement that's, that indicates that it's subject to change. Very good. Yes, sir. That's great. Is three percent enough? Um, just based on what uh, we're able to do any kind of other, most of the, the <coughs> time requirements would fall on myself and other members of, of our office, which is, which are delineated in there, um, in that list, uh, where I'm looking at the items above our, our fees would be for the county attorney and the county manager. That would only be if there's a complication or a dispute from the, the person. Um, that would go before the time to come for the county uh, county commission. This is our first time with this, so I'm not completely sure. Um, but we will definitely look at this, and if it does come up and it does cost more, we will be coming before the board again. This will be we we're looking at this being an annual thing, which is done as part of the budget process uh, for review, reviewing and revising the rates and fees each year. You really uh, track that really. Will do, sir. Uh, well, this year, because I would imagine it's probably 10%. Yes, sir. Okay. Be happy to. Um, 
I will say this, that it will be difficult. We're looking at, at maybe one, one of these cases happening maybe once a year, maybe once every two years. But we, every time this does come up, we will track so we can make sure we do uh, get the, the, the costing uh, complete. Mr. Chairman, I think in looking at this and having gone over uh, this presentation, uh, I would uh, amend Mr. Kelly's motion to include this and have, just like he said, uh, have it tracked as to the increase, if needed, sure. on a year-to-year -year basis. I, I think we've already approved the fees okay. uh, in the previous meeting, hadn't we? You approved the hazmat ordinance. It did oh. not have a, it did not have a schedule of I, fees attached. I, I couldn't remember it if it was. Do you want, want to amend that motion? That's yes, sir. Okay, you go on. Yes. Yeah. All right. All those in favor of approving this ordinance with that uh, additional uh, change um, of adding the fee schedule to it. We have to take this off the table first because we had tabled it. So we did need a motion to take it off the table before we can vote on it. I guess we do. I wouldn't have caught that except it was in there. Yeah, all right. <laughs> I hear my so you take it off the table. So moved, Mr. Chairman. All right. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed, say no. All right. Uh, Mr. Kelly, you want to restate your motion? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much so to uh, include the the fees along with the the uh, ordinance the, print. The, the main ordinance as as stated and having him track the um, the overall cost based on those fees right. and the, over, the overhead right. cost. All right, all those understand the motion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed say no. Vote is unanimous. Therefore, the, op the ordinance is adopted. Thank you, Mr. Grip. Thank you. <laughs> Recognize uh, Mr. Brinson, our tax administrator, who has to relieve interest charge on unpaid 1998 tax bills. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Yeah, before you, um, four individuals that have requested that interest be relieved from the 1998 tax bill. The general statutes in North Carolina give the tax collector authority <coughs> to use enforced collection for a period of 10 years after the due date of the tax. Um, the due date of the tax usually is September 1st of each year, so we head up until September 1st of this year <coughs> to collect the 1998 taxes. We've done a, uh, made a very diligent effort trying to look at all these individuals. There are a number of individuals on this list. Um, with the cooperation of other department heads, it's really been a good success. Basically, with the four cases you have before you, all of them are the same. They had a, a permanent address in Lee County. They then left Lee County and didn't notify the tax office, so we had no forwarding address. Um, we've been able to track these individuals either through the Employment Security Commission, Yellow Pages, We've been able to work with social services to see if they were receiving benefits throughout the county, track them that way. But as you can see, the, the interest at this point is almost as much as the principal would do originally. So I'll be happy to answer any questions I can at this time. How do you explain this letter from the lady that says she never lived in Lee County and you still get us in their tax bill? Um, my guess on that would be that the Department of Motor Vehicles has to have a permanent address. And since she lives, she, since she's claiming she lived in Tennessee, uh, she may have listed her aunt's address, which is what she indicated to me. Her aunt lived on, um, in Sanford. I forget the, the specific street, but she lived in Sanford. So my understanding is that to get a tag, she probably had to list that permanent address. And the only permanent address she had in North Carolina was the one in Sanford. The ironic thing is that the tax office doesn't receive 30-day tags. We don't receive information on 30-day tags. Has she gotten a 30-day tag driven across the <coughs> state line, then we wouldn't have gotten a record. The only way we get records is if she applies for a permanent tag. We don't know if she used 
that tag for the entire year. We don't know if she used it for one day. Dwayne, when I work with the Department of Revenue, um, people would ask for abatement of penalty and interest. And, uh, the state of North Carolina would never, ever abate interest. They might do something with penalty and, um, you know, 10% pay your file, 25% um, pay your pay. Um, but uh, never do they abate interest. So I'd, I'd move that we just uh, deny the request. These are all for personal property, right? Yes, ma'am. These are all motor vehicles, actually. It's all four. Ten years mm -hmm. in the lakewood. Yes, sir. Actually, over ten years now. Have any of them paid you anything? In the One has paid. One, the, um, well, one taxpayer has paid his two tax bills. So one out of these four cases you, you have before you has paid already. And paid the penalty or the tax? Yes, sir. I, I stressed to them <coughs> when I spoke to each taxpayer that they, they had two options. They could go ahead and pay the tax, and if the board decided to relieve interest or any part of the tax, they would refund that to them, and no interest would further accrue. Or they could hold out and not pay the tax, and if the board decided to relieve any interest, then we'd send a new bill. Uh, Mr. Brinson uh, discussed this matter with me, and um, I told him to, to bring it to the board for action. So the motion is that we not approve the, the rebate of the interest. Jones, yes. Since they have a defense to it, uh, it would be better to just say we we'll accept whatever they will pay. Hmm. Well, I think Ms. Milton has an excellent case here. It I was. Don't know names. It was. Hmm. Well, anybody I guess could go look at that in the record, but you know the vehicle was titled and in, in registered in, in Tennessee. So. There was subsequently. You know, again, the ironic thing is we don't receive information on 30-day tags. And to get a North Carolina tag, if she'd gotten a 30-day tag and driven across the state line and applied for a Tennessee tag, then we'd have never taxed her because we don't receive that 30-day tag information. The only information we receive is on permanent tags. So, I, you know, that's, that's the ironic thing with this case. Have you had any dialogue with DMV on, it, on the subject? No, sir, I have not. Why don't we just follow up with them just to make sure that there have been no changes? Right. Okay. Just make sure that we don't receive information on 30-day tags. Or back in 1998, we didn't. Because right. I know now we don't. I don't know about back to that. Yeah. So I, I can do that. All right. Do they even, does DMV even uh, advise persons uh, requesting 20 or 30 day tags or whatever, uh, that those tags have to be turned back in even if they cross the, you know, the state lines and, and say living out there in Tennessee, Kentucky, wherever. Uh, that's does DMV I mean, do that? That's something I could ask them. When I, I, think, I think it should be uh, something they should let everyone know. I don't think there's a requirement to turn in a temporary tag. Normally what happens if the vehicle is financed, then um, you know, you've got to send proof to the um, bank that's financing that the titling and tag work is done. I know from just selling RVs and a good number of those that we sell out of state, you know, um, there's a temporary 30-day tag. If it's a cash deal, um, the buyer is responsible for titling and, and tagging <coughs> it in the other state. And there are some states where we have reciprocity agreements with, with the sales tax, but I would say in this particular situation that um, I can't see forcing that on there. Just from my experience with the you know, RV dealership, that this could be a very real situation. I don't think she should be responsible for the interest that's 10 years old here for something that may not have been a, a legitimate ta tax responsibility for her. Mr. Hall, what was your comment? Um, Since the statute ran on, it, on September the 1st this year, 
they have a legal defense that we would sue them, and therefore I would suggest we tell them we'd accept any payment they make. So moved. Well, we have a motion on the floor already. Well, we've got two now. So, somebody's going to have to withdraw so the motion. They're completely out of, uh, we're out of statute on actually collecting this. We can't enforce collections. We can we can send them a customer in a statement, but we can't attach the bank account. We can't garnish wages. And the, the important thing to stress here is that there are going to be more of these because there, there are more delinquent taxes out there. All right. I would draw the motion. Authority to release yeah. taxes are limited by what the General Assembly puts in the law. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Kelly has agreed to uh, withdraw his motion, so we'll recognize the motion by Mr. Reeves. That motion was? Whatever Mr. Hall said. <laughs> whatever that to accept whatever, whatever, whatever they're willing to pay on their account. I don't think there's much else we can do that's out of statute. Yeah. All right, all those uh, in favor of the motion say aye. Uh, Any opposed say no. Motion carries unanimously. You still may want to check with the MV for that information. Just to make sure. Yeah, for, for future information also, uh, we'll know how to handle it better, maybe, by checking with DMV. <coughs> Moving on to new business. Uh, I want to recognize Mr. Rick, Rick Hager, consider a resolution from the Lee County Bar Association for additional space at the courthouse. Good morning, Mr. Hager. Good morning, Chairman Brown and uh, fellow commissioners, county manager, attorney. Uh, I am appearing here as, uh, on behalf of the Bar Association, not because I hold any office, but because of the last to do so. I think you folks have been provided with a resolution probably before your meeting in September, and then the resolution was amended by the Bar Association, and I hope that amendment made its way into your package. Um, I, I'm not really here to ask for additional space. What, I, what I'm here to ask you to consider doing is um, appointing an advisory committee um, that would consist of the folks that uh, currently reside in or around the courthouse, as well as uh, one or more members uh, of the commission and or the county manager uh, simply to take up future space requests wherever they come from. Um, our concern <coughs> is that uh, we don't feel as a group that uh, we've really had much of a voice in the process in the past. And uh, some of you may remember <coughs> what it was like at the old Lee County Courthouse before we built this new one in 95, I believe it was. Um, we had, uh, over time, uh, as the uh, public offices were provided additional space, and we understand <coughs> that we have to provide that space, um, what ended up happening is there weren't any conference rooms in that building. Uh, lawyers uh, may be a necessary evil, but they are an integral part of your court system. Uh, <coughs> The district attorney, for example, ha has, has an office where they can meet with witnesses and staff members in uh, preparation for trials that are ongoing. The defense lawyers need the same thing. Uh, we all have offices, but it, it's just not practical in the midst of a trial, for example, to run back downtown, that happens to be where your office is, or even where mine's located. My experience is Superior Court judges are not interested in waiting around while we do that sort of thing. Um, so, like it or not, uh, you, you really do need to provide some space where uh, attorneys can meet with their clients while they're conducting business at the courthouse. You know, and these are not all criminal cases. Uh, I did that for 22 years. Uh, I quit doing that about seven years ago, and I just handled civil matters, and civil matters in most every case, there are two lawyers, two clients, numerous witnesses. Uh, and if we keep going in the direction that we've gone, um, we're simply not going to have any space there to, to carry on the business of the court. Um, as I say, what brought this up was the recent decision uh, to 
expand the district attorney's office, but we understand that they need additional space. Perhaps we understand that better than most people do. But what we also understand <clears throat> is that it probably wasn't a prudent decision years ago to put the district attorney's office where it's located. Uh, that's a secured area or supposed to be back there. We've got a sally port that comes up back there. We've got prisoners back there. And it really doesn't make a lot of sense to us from a security perspective to have members of the general public walking back there to the DA's office or to anybody else's office to conduct public business when prisoners are being brought up for appearances in court. <coughs> so we don't think that was you know, particularly well thought out. All we're really asking is that we just have an opportunity to be involved, share whatever thoughts we have, anytime space is being reallocated down there, um, or to make suggestions, which you, you know, this board uh, obviously can do with it, uh, do whatever they want with those suggestions. But, but we think that it's only fair that all of the, the folks that, that you know, use that facility, including lawyers who are officers of the court, you know, have a say. And uh, so that's the reason for the resolution. Um, I'll be happy to try and answer any questions. Right. Any commissioner have a uh, question of Mr. Hager? <coughs> so who all are you going to have on the seven-member committee? I think what we've tried to do is to basically propose that all the folks that are presently located there, like the clerk of the court, uh, the register of deeds, uh, Judge Love, uh, the sheriff, probation and parole's um, head, um, as well as a, a, a one member of the private bar, and then uh, e either and or a commissioner, uh, certainly the county manager, uh, be involved. Uh, in, in, time that, you know, what, again, our, our purpose or what we thought might be beneficial to the board was any time there was a request that was received by uh, either the clerk of the court or some member of this board for uh, additional space, or reallocation of space, or realignment of space, that it ought to go before this committee at least uh, for a recommendation. <coughs> Again, whatever the board chooses to do with that recommendation is, is the board's decision. But we, we hope that would, that would enable you to make uh, that courthouse last a little longer. There's certainly no question that it's probably fast approaching uh, Capacity. Capacity. Thank you. Good thing of the word. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Crockett. Capacity. And we, we appreciate that, but, but we think that you know, maybe uh, we can be of some help. And we, we would just have one vote, so, on this little committee, if you choose to create it. John, what is, is there any action or any dialogue taking place among all the stakeholders at this point? Well, it's been kind of fractured, I would say. You know, not everybody together at one time. Um, you know, and what we're trying to do over there for the DA's office. And I think another thing, um, you know, some folks uh, don't realize it, but, you know, in the next General Assembly, there may be more changes. <coughs> so I think we're going to be right back in this issue discussing it again. Um, you know, there's talking about, you know, splitting the district that the, our DA serves. So we could end up with our own DA and uh, we're right back in the same same boat and you know there are others that have issues the the clerk is running out of file space you know she's using the basement but it's not a great place to put it because it's, there's no uh, humidity control so she's got all these papers down there that uh, are in kind of a moist area that's not great so there are other issues the sheriff needs to expand um, you know there's there's a lot going on but uh, we don't all get together, and I don't think I think the committee actually would be a good idea. Just so, we, if nothing nothing else, so everybody knows each other's needs and what's going on. I definitely don't want to make that determination. I think that all those involved need to be part of that process and you know, come up with recommendations. So move to approve the recommendation. All right. For the committee. Um, For the committee? Yes. Mr. Hager and I have discussed this and. Uh, I think the the amendment uh, came as a result of our of our discussion. That that's true. So uh, this is only a recommending body, as I understand right. the request. That's correct. <coughs> the other 
think there are a couple of things. One, I think that there are mandates placed on us that we don't have much choice. We've got only so much building and we have to use it the way uh, it's being forced on us to use. I understand. And, and secondly, um, what's the current layout of the old courthouse? How much usage does it receive at this point? Uh, do you know anyone? I know the downstairs is occupied by uh, probation and parole, and then I guess the upstairs courthouse is used. Um, I don't know how often it is used, but um, not not very. Yeah, I think we you know we use it. Grand jury, grand <laughs> jury <laughs> use that space. No, the old grand, grand, grand jury has its own meeting room up uh, on, on the, the same courthouse. courthouse. Uh, it's a, in my humble opinion, the uh, old courthouse is perhaps our finest courtroom in terms of the space. It's about when you all meet there peri periodically, I think. And the seating uh, also, you can see in there. It's, it's an angle. Uh, and, and I think that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. We I, That's probably underutilized. Yeah. I think that, along with looking at the downstairs usage of the old courthouse, we might consider doing some relocating. Right, and there, and there are some rooms in the, in the old courthouse that, that are not being used right. uh, on the second floor. There's an old office suite up there. Right. Yeah. yeah. So this committee, if it is approved, can approach that and uh, yes. bring some recommendation uh, back to the to this <coughs> Yes, sir. With, with, with a cap on expenses and costs, in mind, please. <laughs> I understand. Well, that's, that's where I think the county manager could be help to us all. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, all those in favor of uh, approving this resolution, uh, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say no. It is adopted unanimously. On, on behalf of the Bar Association, I thank you. All right. And uh, you, who's going to organize this as to who is going to represent these entities that are listed here? Well, I, I think we thought that uh, probably the, the sheriff, the clerk, the register of deeds, the, the, uh, I don't know what the title is, but the person that heads up probation and parole, uh, that they would be members. Uh, the district, senior district attorneys, uh, probably Mr. Beam, and then the bar will elect its, its member. Uh, we haven't yet done that because that would have been premature. And then I think, uh, depending on how you I don't remember how it ended up, uh, but certainly it would be a our county manager. Cap county manager, right? Uh, He'd be our representative. Yes, I think that would. And be of good. course, Mr. Hall is a member of the bar, so certainly. Uh, he's Mr. Hall normally tags along with me to keep me out of trouble. <laughs> we appreciate. Oh, yeah. it. Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. He knows more about that courthouse stuff than I do. <laughs> Maybe you can find a, a room stretcher or something like that. <laughs> we'll try. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Okay. Thanks. Uh, I recognize uh, Mr. Bridwell, consider a joint resolution for transportation and the improvement program, the TIP for 2011 through 2017. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, uh, members of the board, uh, county manager, county attorney. Normally, we, uh, we receive a request from the state uh, every other year for a joint resolution for the TIP process. And we did one last year, but this year we got a request uh, about a month ago from our transportation planner at the Triangle JRPO for a resolution again this year. Uh, we saw no reason to change anything in terms of priorities, considering that it's based on our newly adopted uh, comprehensive transportation plan. But we did, uh, in the resolution that's before you, add a phrase as a consequence of the BRAC recommendation comprehensive growth plan that the uh, that priority number one that you have placed receive all additional priority as a consequence of the BRAC's recommendations. Otherwise, the recommendations for this resolution are identical to last year's. I'd be going, I'm glad to go over each one of them if you like, but uh, I'll not waste your time if you don't. Were the same years involved uh, last the, year? The years will be switched up from 2009 to 2014. Last, excuse me, I'm sorry. 
Last year's was 2009 to 2014. This is 2011 to 2017. Any questions of Mr. Bridwell? Motion to approve, Mr. Chairman. Motion has been made to approve. Has there been any formal requests made to RAC trying to secure additional funding for this number one effort? They, they have their own recommendation that, got, that is also going to Congress, and I believe that's going through their recommendations, but uh, other than that, I'm not sure of the reason. Well, it, it would seem to me we, we've made contributions to them. It ought to be an exchange process, and we ought to make a formal request for monies to, transportation monies to uh, make this happen uh, <coughs> sooner than, rather than later. Okay, well, I'll, I'll be glad to draft a letter we're asking them to do that. At least they can get on our bandwagon. Yeah. Sure. Uh, yeah. I'm glad you brought that up, Commissioner Whatever. Reeves, because um, we have a couple of people in our county who know more about this whole BRAC thing than anybody at the city or county government. They've gone to every meeting. Um, they know all the generals by name. They know the numbers. And this is something I'd like to have verified. Back in April, the counties were asked to submit their infrastructure needs for water and sewer, for schools and whatever. And if what I was told is accurate, and I'd like to have this obtained, Lee County uh, didn't, you know, our county, whether it be the municipalities, whoever, did not submit anything on that. And it's my understanding that other counties have submitted, you know, water and sewer. They've submitted a school, a highway, and looks like they'll be getting some of those funds. So, you know, I, I, I would I, like to, to it, know. The, 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 the actual bypass is in their recommendations. I know that. That's in the final study. In terms of water and sewer, the city did not make a request because we didn't feel like anything was directly impacted by BRAC on the city's current plan. So that, that was just not. What well, it's going to be impacted. People come here, it's going to be impacted. We're, we're all going to suffer some kind of uh, change in the way we do business. So if I understand what Commissioner Shook is saying, the fact that they made an opportunity available to us to put it in to their uh, budget request or or, or to request assistance from the federal government, why wouldn't we want to do that automatically? Well, I'm, I'm not sure, Mr. Reese. I wasn't responsible for that, but that's, that was my Well, that's what she's trying to find out, and I'd like to know myself yeah. who is responsible. But, but the, the actual bypass was in their final recommendation. Well, being in there and sending the check are two different things, as you well know. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm suggesting here that we take a more formal approach to trying to get their uh, their attention. I mean, they don't make any bones about asking us for money uh, more, more frequently than I think they ought to, but they still do it. But certainly we ought to be doing when we that. When we received the, um, the draft report and the impacts that were outlined in the draft report, um, I haven't sent a formal letter to Representative Etheridge, but I have gone over those impacts with him and the main impact was the school construction number of nine million dollars and I did make sure that we had a request in in there for that um, capital because um, they um, they have representative Ather has proposed legislation that would pay the BRAC counties for that uh, for that capital number but I have not made any request to them on water and sewer um, at this point so, well, extending that to the southern part of the county where a lot of this growth is going to take place would certainly relieve local taxpayers, you know, from having to fund that and put that in there to support the growth. So, um, wouldn't that be a function of what the city to do? It's not the county. I, mean, we don't I think it's also a function of the developers. Um, and I have been approached by a, a couple of folks who would like to see us, you know, get involved <coughs> in some of those things. And I have had discussions with with Harnett County and Moore County. Um, they are two counties that are trying to make requests for those things um, in water and sewer improvements, but um, you know, right now they're not specific um, as to the area that the water and sewer will go to. Um, and they've had the same developers contact them, so. Well, I think, you know, and it's my understanding that community development is a joint effort between county and city, is that right? 
and with this whole second century project with you know trying to do the rebranding or whatever we can't be territorial on this somebody's got to represent you know the entire county whether it be from a municipality within it or the county or whatever and and um, I just think we've dropped the ball on this to be well, honest. Uh, Ma'am, I'm not, I'm not going to try to disagree with you but the city has looked at where the where the trans where the lift stations should go there's only one lift station required for the lower part of the county from my understanding and that has already been planned for, but no, no direct plans to extend or to sewer down to that area have been made, nor are anticipated uh, any further than they already are. Uh, the sewer lines will be extended down to Barrington Park for that new development. That goes quite a ways down there. But in terms of anticipating growth in the southern part of the county, uh, a lot of work has been doing on, on studying that analysis, doing that analysis, but the city's ability to do that is pretty much driven by the development process rather than any major, uh, the city would not pre, uh, prejudge the development and put a lift station down there in order to attract more development. It's generally done by the development taking place in the city anticipating the timing of that. So it's, it's not like the city ignored the BRAC process. The city is constantly doing that, but, but in terms of the extension facilities right now, nothing is anticipated other than what we've already expected for that part of the county. And in terms of the water, in terms of the transportation, the bypass was the other major phase, and education was the second part of that. And that is, I understand, in the recommendations, both of those major facilities. Well, I think, I strongly believe that any government at the local level, one of its core responsibilities is planning for the infrastructure. And I just don't want to see us be in a react mode that all of a sudden there's going to be growth taking place there, and oh my, we have it planned on how we're going to, you know, pay for the infrastructure that's there. And um, I, I think that some of these other counties did include money in the grant for some of their critical infrastructure needs. And if, if nobody in Lee County did, I'm going to be very disappointed in that. And I'll take responsibility for dropping the ball myself, but I thought there were others who were doing that. Well, I haven't uh, seen a request for that information or well, I've actually had minutes from planning meetings and and other things and um, you know I looked over those somebody gave me a file this thick and you know I haven't seen any proactive um, efforts from anyone in Lee County you know to you know when that request was made well I think it was April when the deadlines were for uh, infrastructure and education requests from you know any BRAC funds that were there you know whether the schools did anything? We have several different groups who meet with the PRAC folks. Um, you know, Mr. Pascal's on the executive board. He meets with them, um, as does the mayor. We had the joint meeting between our two boards when <coughs> the preliminary plan was addressed, which, you know, uh, the city manager I, and I had hoped that would lead towards, you know, more discussion. But um, Harnett, Harnett, Cumberland, and Hoke, um, are the major impacted counties right. and they are out there requesting money um, I'm fully aware of what they're requesting um, but we have not made the same request because we have not seen the similar type of impact that they're going to have especially from the population numbers yes we're going to have an impact and where we you know have been able to ask we have asked to be a part of if we want to be um, involved more I'm, I'd be you know, more than happy to meet. We have been representative on all those, on all every one of those task forces. I've been yeah. on transportation, and we're representative. Their education yeah. has been representative. Mr. Hughes goes to the economic development board. task force so meetings. Well, you know, it might be a good idea for a couple of these citizens who are on some of these committees that have gone to all these meetings, and for them to come speak to us because I was quite taken aback by what I didn't know what was going on and whatever. Um, one of them's on a group called Sustainable Stand Hills. You know, it's a, it's a group. And I says, is that another one of our um, government groups? And she says, no, this one's not. So that's probably why it's efficient. Lee County is not a member of that group. And it's because it has to do with the geography. When I was in Scotland County, we were a member. Mm -hmm. And I attended the Sustainable Sand Hills meetings. And when I came up here, I asked their executive director, I said, is Lee County part of that group? And he said, no. And it's, you know, by 
geographic region. It has to do with the ecosystem. Sustainable Stand Hills has to do with the, their big deal was the woodpecker on base. And, uh, you know, I can start getting into more stories about what, the, what they've done. The data she had was really the economic development part of it that I was impressed with. And so um, a lot of numbers that I haven't seen anywhere that um, were, were obtained by attending these, these meetings with the generals and the, the key decision makers. So I just um, you know, don't want us to lose out on anything here and then have the taxpayers here have to fund the infrastructure and the growth. Well, it, it still seems to me that when they need, they being BRAC, make their funding requests, we're always included, always. So for the life of me, I could, I don't understand why we aren't making the same kind of request our counterparts are making. Whether you receive it or not is still left to question. But you obviously will not receive it if you're not even in the, in the requesting business. So if we're going to continue to be a part of BRAC, then we ought to fully engage and make the same type of financial assistance request that other counties are making. And because the guy says we're not in the Sand Hills, I'm in the Sand Hills because I paid to be in the Sand Hills. <coughs> and, and I would like to be benefited the same way that Harnett, Cumberland, and Hoke are being financially benefited. All right, uh, we have a motion on the floor. We'll get back to the original um, reason we're um, here uh, with Mr. Bridwell, and this is to approve this uh, resolution. I've got a question on, you've got 11 on here, and I don't object to them, but two and three are pretty close to being of equal concern uh, to me. I'd even feel better if they were two and two, um, because it's just as difficult on the uh, eastern part of the county as it is in the western part when it comes to traffic in those two two sections. Okay, we have a motion on the floor. Any further discussion? All those in favor of approving this uh, resolution, say aye. Aye. Any opposed, say no. Be so ordered. And uh, we need to check on the BRAC situation and request for, uh, for us to request to be included in, uh, in the money distribution. Um, and as I say, I have not seen any request has not come to my attention uh, for what you were talking about. So, Brother, well, do you think there's possibility of a open window type thing to where they would have additional fundings for anything? Anything that you may have heard about or anything like this? We, we uh, constantly watch every, everything that's going on down there. And every, every time, if we see something that we think we can take advantage of, We'll be on it immediately back to the county manager for a recommendation. Just as this case came up, we just felt like it was appropriate to add the uh, bypass as a part of our tip process and make sure that we collect the books in the study. Thanks, sir. All right, that ends the new business portion. We go now to the manager's report. And um, <coughs> it's ironic, but uh, we have a BRAC <laughs> update. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just thinking what I was going to say now. Um, there, yeah, sir, I'm going to take care of it. Uh, and um, you know, we, you know, I get all the emails from Brack, so um, you know, I'll make sure everybody starts getting it, getting the same information. But there are nine items um, that are ongoing um, right now that the um, Brack RTF is working on. Uh, most of it has to do with uh, workforce development and uh, trying to get our schools engaged in developing a skilled workforce um, that can uh, handle the job requirements that are going to be needed at Fort Bragg. 
Um, I don't think a lot of people understand, but when when uh, Forcecom and USARC locates here, um, there are going to be a lot of high tech positions needed at, at the base. Um, and uh, a lot of the money that BRAC has been trying to get is to get our workforce prepared for that. Originally, um, only about 25% of the folks down in Atlanta said that they were going to relocate to Fayetteville. And now those numbers are, are uh, um, I should say, to Fort Bragg. Now those numbers are jumping mainly because a lot of people thought they could retire from the military, get a second job in Atlanta, and be able to double dip. Now they're seeing, you know, with the job market the way it is, um, they're probably relocating, so that number is a lot higher. But there's still a large number of positions that are going to be created um, in the, um, the first um, five items all have to do with developing the workforce and uh, being prepared for when they get here um, and handling those jobs that will be needed. Uh, John, the um, that portable I3D imaging system that meets here in Sanford, that we won't be getting that, that's going to the Harnett County. Is there only one per? There's only one right now, but there is a under item number three, a supplemental grant request where um, we're trying to get one for the community college here in Sanford. Well, if it's portable, we can use this one. <laughs> and it can even be moved. <coughs> but yeah, I don't think, yeah, I don't think uh, it'd be tough getting it out of Harnett County over here, I believe. Have they scheduled any demonstrations of, of any of this stuff for um, anybody other than, you know, us reading what it is? But I would like to, to see it. Experience it. I'm getting a nod, yes, and I don't. I have not seen the schedule, but I will uh, find out and communicate it to the board. Okay. Any other questions about Breck? Okay. Central Carolina Community Hospital request. Yes, sir. With the recent uh, fuel shortages, uh, the hospital had requested um, that we be their backup for fuel. Um, there was a uh, period of time there where diesel was unavailable in the county except at our pump. And, um, you know, they had, uh, requested that they be part of, of that on an emergency basis. Of course, you know, my initial decision was well, we got to have the ambulances running. We have a contract with them and we would just charge them the same rate that we charge the schools. Um, so um, I'm not sure if this needs to be an addendum to their to their contract, but you know I would think that we would want you know an emergency situation where they can't get fuel at the local pumps that we would want to help them out, and we would just charge them the same rate we charge the other departments because um, we need to keep those ambulances running. I mean I was just going to let them do it and then charge them for it, but mm -hmm. want to let the board know that we were going to do it and. Ask Mr. Hall if we need to <coughs> probably do an addendum to the contract. We can do that. So, if anybody doesn't have any, you know, disapproval of that, we're just going to go ahead and move forward with that. Okay. Well, we can uh, we can take a vote on it and uh, with the stipulation that it be added to the contract okay. as an addendum. I have a motion. Mr. Chairman, I think it's imperative we keep those tight buildings in operation because it has been hard to find. Any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say no. It's unanimous. Anything else, Mr. Crump? Uh, I sent some correspondence out to y'all last week, or I should say Gaynell, Maryland sent it out on um, our fees for copies in the making of DVDs. And um, just wanted to let you know we're reviewing our fees um, and trying to ascertain the exact cost um, uh, that we can charge for each, um, for copies and for DVDs. So we've been um, question on our ability to charge a fee, and we're reviewing that at this time. Other than that, I don't have anything else.
I, well, Mr. Crumpton and I met with the uh, uh, school board uh, chairman in, uh, in the interim uh, head man over there uh, a couple of months ago, and we discussed uh, the hiring of a new uh, new superintendent, and uh, I think it was the general consensus that uh, maybe uh, a committee be appointed to scan uh, the app applications uh, once the date for applications had expired. And I was requested uh, by the chairman of the school board to appoint a uh, commissioner to serve on that committee. Uh, we had to do it uh, before this meeting because the first meeting of that uh, committee is this afternoon. I have asked Mr. Pascal to serve in that capacity uh, and he has agreed to do so. Uh, so I would like uh, a motion to, uh, to approve my appointment of Mr. <coughs> Mr. Pascal to, to that committee. Uh, let me ask you a question before, yes. uh, or I can give you a motion to approve. Mm -hmm. why, would, why would we be circumventing our current Commissioner representative on the committee. Well, I, I didn't even consider that. Uh, my consideration uh, in appointment was that the person who would have the time, this is going to be a rather time consuming effort. And uh, by people who had time to, to do what needs to be done, uh, it was narrowed down actually to two individuals, uh, Mr. Pascal or myself. Uh, so <laughs> that's pretty presumptuous, but fine, if that's the way you're going to do it. Well, it doesn't, we, we have a representative on the board, the existing board. Yeah, they should. That's correct. Yeah. So it, it seems out of place for her to be substituted in a situation that she, in the capacity she already serves, is all I'm asking. She can then speak to her time availability herself. I, uh, this afternoon, obviously, there's uh, it's a little short notice, but um, you, you give uh, something to a busy person to do, they'll find a way to get it done. Well, are you saying that you want to do this? Um, I would be glad to be a part of that. Um, this afternoon, you know, with um, the other couple of things we and the, the fair that's going on, um, I don't know that I could meet this afternoon. But well, the meeting is uh, is it four o'clock? Four o'clock this afternoon, and there are two other meetings that are scheduled, I believe. Uh, one. Glad to let her have my place. <laughs> <laughs> Where is the meeting this afternoon? At the. Uh, I could probably work that one. Um, do we know when the other the meetings are going to be scheduled? I guess I could figure that out there. I'd be glad to do that. All right. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Two more than sure. Inferred discussion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed say no. It's so ordered and uh, Madam Clerk, will you ask for one more? All right, Commissioner's comments. Mr. Reeves. None at this time, sir. Mr. Lamont. Uh two, Mr. Chairman. Uh, one, I forgot to last, at the last meeting, thank all the uh, board members for the uh, approval of the VAD. I've talked to several members in the farming community, farm families, and they certainly do appreciate it. Also, I'd like to ask any board member uh, if they have any concerns concerning agriculture. I have a uh, conference, well it's not a conference, it's a work session for the Agricultural Steering Committee coming up on the 22nd of this month. And if they have any concerns in their 
in their districts or throughout the county. Just get with me. This will be a legislative goals type uh, uh, meeting that will be held on the 22nd. All right, Mr. Kelly. Um, I just wanted to say I was very proud of uh, going to the Second Century Project the other day and seeing that many people in one place in Lee County, and it made me feel good to be part of Lee County and Sanford, and uh, it just it, it made me really, really proud of, of what we and business a group of business people have accomplished. That you know, uh, it, it's sort of uh, hard that government can actually. Um, multiple governments actually get something accomplished like that and I would hope that all the uh, government municipalities of, of Lee County uh, embrace what they've done and uh, push it forward because I think it's a great thing and uh, we need to uh, it's, it's imperative that uh, you know, a lot of times image is everything and um, you know, I think they put forth a good image for Lee County and um, Sanford and Broadway and everybody else. So I'm hoping that uh, we all get behind it and support it because I'd love to, I'd love to see more functions like that at the Depot Park. It just, you know, you, you consider what Depot Park was uh, 10 years ago and, and look at it now and um, it just makes me proud to be here. Well, and uh, I agree with you. The turnout, really, I was surprised when I got down to Depot Park and saw all those people. It was a huge event. And uh, comment that, that, that I made when I met with them previous to that before what uh, they were doing, uh, I made the comment of the fact that sometimes projects like this don't succeed because you don't stay in behind it and keep it in the forefront. Uh, so. I think the individuals that are involved uh, in pushing this forward, they will do what's necessary and uh, we'll see results from it. Well, just one question. What's the status on the chiller at the courthouse? The, uh, <coughs> <laughs> that, uh, talked with Lee last week, uh, the chiller's scheduled to be shipped on the 27th of October. So probably, uh, he will immediately start work on it. Uh, he has also had his uh, people as far as computer, computer connections. They've already been doing their preliminary uh, process of that, uh, making sure everything's going to be in place. So I hope it's going to be a smooth uh, transition and uh, we'll have a new show in place. Uh, I do appreciate the uh, support of the board during this time because as we all will see, it's been a long process. Once it was ordered, uh, it's, you know, it's two months just to get it built to get it here, but uh, hopefully we'll be in good shape for some time. One, one quick thing, uh, Doug, tailing on that, Russell. Yes, sir. Is there a court, I mean, is there anything, to, you know, such as a core charge or anything? What, what do they do with the old one? They, that was part of the contract there, uh, <coughs> to remove it. Uh, and the reason behind it, man, the, is such a, it's a job to move because it's got a bottom crane. It's got to be broke down. And the right process is probably going to soon start taking place. Uh, so Does it have any salvage value? Some, yeah, it's got some salvage value. But that was part of the contract that they were removing. And the reason for them removing is because the indoor cost of crane services and that stuff is pretty, pretty great because the contractor is going to have to have this available to do what he needs to set the, the new one in place. But yeah, there's got it's got some value to it. Uh, the I, I would say the most value would be the uh, copper coils. Uh, what they I, I do not know. Uh, and also there's some you know the, the freon has to be removed if, if there's any still in the unit. Uh, we've had some leak problems in the past, but yes, it does have some value. But what I don't know. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Um, I've given each of you a packet here. In our last video, I told you I was going to be attending an illegal immigration workshop, which I did on September 19th. Um, 
earlier in the day that Senator Dole was here that night for um, a workshop. And we've only got, what, two other board meetings here before election, so, you know, this is probably something that the next board will want to do. But I wanted to point out some information that's in here. And um, the, the two speakers at that, one was a... Um, Prince William County, Virginia supervisor, the equivalent of a commissioner here. And the other one was um, an immigration attorney from the Washington, D.C. area, and all he does is consult with local and state governments to <coughs> pass resolutions and laws that um, enforce federal laws at the state and local level. I want to specifically point out to you on the inside right cover, it says, what is your county doing about illegal immigration? And um, it, it mentions here what some of the North Carolina counties are doing, and I was pretty impressed with Beaufort County. And I guess, John, I have a request for you. Do you know the Beaufort County manager? Um, I sure do. Okay. Um, because they have really taken the lead here, and if you have time um, just to check with him, on these things, you know, how far they've come and what they've discovered and, and so forth, and maybe just report back at our next meeting. Um, okay, and then I um, also want to point out that there's some sample resolutions in here that they did, and um, the results of what they saw with their decline in uninsured births at some of the hospitals, um, you know, their decline in ESL uh, course enrollment. Um, they also did something with um, enforcing their housing codes. Now that obviously is something that, you know, I don't even know if we have a county housing ordinance, but limiting the number of people that can live in a residence and whatever. So moving forward, it may very well be that um, the county and the city governments want to discuss options on this. Maybe there are some concerns from both government levels. So um, just wanted to tell you this is for informational purposes only. I found it um, really good. The, the workshop um, was a full room. Um, and it was mostly county commissioners there, um, candidates for county commissioner who were running. And, and this is one of their, their issues. There was law enforcement there. And there was a, a group from the um, other side that was there also that made a little disturbance at the end, but um, you're going to see that. So anyway, just wanted to let you know that that's my report on this, and hopefully you have a chance to look at it. And John, if you could let us know what Beaufort County is accomplishing so far. Who went with you on this? Didn't someone from the county go? I went by myself. And I didn't charge back any mileage. I had never charged anything to the taxpayers of this county. I did it on my own. Thank you.